uh, you know, we just we're sitting here thinking. I looked at the date and I go, "Wow, the anniversary's tomorrow." Yeah. Well, the rain really started today on the 13th, and then everything poured over on the 14th. This is actually the five-year anniversary for the Highland Flood. Highland Flood of six. So it's it's amazing how that September was on 13th, 13th yes. of 06. Yep. Yep. Gosh, I have I have. Uh, uh, who was on the air then? I can't remember. It might have been Rick Federici and Fowler. Do I, I think that was a tape. We have tape from that one too. That was horrible. Yeah. People forget about that one. We don't. That was no. a little. That was a little further south off the river, though. Well, it was just. It was a. It was a storm that just really hit Highland and, and parts of Hammond. And then if you got uh, two miles east or two miles west, and it was, it was, just a. Shower, but Depart- Highland got it eight inches of rain in some portions of town, and that was devastating. For What's us. that ditch that goes? Uh, is that Katie Sp- Marsh Ditch? Katie Marsh Ditch. That's where most of it was, right? Yeah, the, the, we, we had rain gauges throughout the community, and uh, the, the 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 one that recorded the most amount of rain was at the, near Southridge School, which is right adjacent to the Katie Marsh Ditch, and we just got under eight inches, and that was in three yeah, hours. Yeah, and that's where you saw the pictures of the rowboat that had to actually come into Southridge School and take the kids out by boat. Yeah. The, the, the storm of 08, which was a lot of rain, too, and, and over a broader area, it amounted to about eight, a little over eight inches for the two-day period. We got that in one section of town in three hours. So yeah. there's, a, then there's, there's a big difference. I mean, it was devastating in 06, or 08, no, no doubt about it, but that was a more widespread uh, event. They call that a microburst, right? The one that we had would probably, uh, microbursts tend to have a lot of wind damage and things of that nature. We didn't have too much of that. It was just a lot of rain in a very short period of time. John Bach and uh, Bernie Zeman. Uh, Bernie, what do we got going on in the town of Highland? You know, we just recently received word from FEMA that um, we're going to be getting, I guess, out of the, the floodplain or it's going to be... Portions of yeah, the so I brought John on with me today too because I know a lot of people call me all the time about when they're going to have to, keep, how long they have to keep paying their insurance for flood, and so I think John could. Uh, yeah, from, from the on, from the onset of, uh, of the of the work that's being done on the Little Cabinet River, one of the one of the um, one of the issues that was always out there is when this uh, levee system was completed, that a large a large areas of of properties along the Little Cabinet River would be removed from the their the uh, a flood zone zone a and um, about three years ago after the levees were completed in highland and in hammond at least up to northcott uh, both communities had to work together engaged an engineer christopher burke associates um, and uh, along with the congressman's office and applied for a, a lomar a letter of map revision uh, to expedite the process of getting these homes and businesses from the floodplain and we just had received word uh, early last week that uh, that Lomar was approved. So uh, we're now in the process of putting letters together to mail out to those persons that are affected by the decision and give them some information about what they can do uh, to, uh, to amend their flood insurance. Um, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a lesser risk category. Um, we're not advocating that people drop their insurance, but uh, the choice is now going to be in their hands. All right, I'm looking uh, at a map of Highland here, and uh, let's say, I mean, you got to be talking about obviously the the folks that are closest to the river, but w- which folks does this? Affect? Well, the, the the flood zone. There's a number of flood zones in Highland uh, that there's there's some along the Katie Marsh Ditch that weren't affected by this Lomar, but areas along the Little Cabinet River. It's essentially from Klein Avenue to uh, to the uh, Indianapolis Boulevard. Um, immediately south of the river to about uh, Garfield's Garfield Avenue, that area um, prior to last week was in a, f- a category A flood zone, and that has been uh, now amended to a category B flood zone. Do we know how many uh, houses are in that area? In Highland, uh, it represents about 1,600 homes and businesses. So wait a second. So the big news, I guess, here in Hammond was they got removed from the floodplain. I think we were talking about. Yeah, that's and that's Is that was different. That's the same. It was the same process. We had worked together with them. They got uh, a little bit more publicity from the local media uh, than Highland did at the time, but it was the same. It was a, it, it was the same stroke of the pen that uh, that took both Highland uh, areas of Highland and areas of Hammond, particularly the Capella's property. That's uh, the uh, uh, the area that people have been referring to the Capella's property out of the flood zone. 
Okay, all right, I'm going to give you guys a little better idea on this here. Garfield is uh, almost to Ridge Road. It's, what, four streets uh, from Ridge Road. What is at Kennedy and Garfield? Is that the, is that um, the post office or? Uh, about the post office, yes. Yeah, Laporte yeah, Street. Yeah, 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 Essentially, any of the homes that were in that that were in that boundary were in a flood zone are now will be out of that f a flood zone. Okay, so just to Laporte give them Street a is the post office. Uh, the post office is at Laporte and Kennedy. So actually, even a little bit south of a there. Bit, so just a little bit the, south. So of if that. you know where, what is it? Aid Reynolds probably is that right, 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 right in that area. Right. Yeah, Aid Reynolds at, on the corner there, almost to the old town theater. So. Basically, all of that area, all the way across, going north to the river, was in the floodplain, and now it has been moved from Category A to Category B. They can still buy insurance, but it'll just be cheaper. Absolutely. That's exactly right. And that's basically the education process you guys probably have to go through. You, know, you sent letters out to people. Letters will go out. We just got notification. There's 1,600 homes uh, that need to be notified, so uh, we're getting that data, the property owners. Uh, and we have a letter that's been drafted and it's being prepared and copied, and those should go out by the end of this week. John Bach is in the house. If you want to ask him a question or Bernie Zeman, 209-845-1100. I'm going to ask this question to you, John Bach. You've been around, how long have you been uh, working for Highland? A long time. No, what year? 39, 39 years. 39 Highland, years, yeah. okay. I mean, you know, let's let's call it like it is. When you, when you talk of uh, public works directors who've been around, you know, he's one of the more respected here in the entire state of Indiana. So let me ask wow. you this. Uh, no, he's going to want to raise. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he deserves it. <laughs> hey, listen, um, uh, do you feel like these folks that are north of Garfield all the way to the river, of all the work that's been done, do you feel that they're uh, much safer than they were 15 years ago? Oh, abs absolutely! That they're, they're more safer. Are they completely out of the out of the water, so to speak? Absolutely not. I mean, it, no one can predict what Mother Nature is going to do, and uh, uh, so th there's always going to be some element of risk that that we all have, whether it's a, a you know Hurricane Ike coming up out of the Gulf and dumping eight inches across the region, or a microburst, as we called it earlier, dumping uh, eight inches of water in, in over a, th a couple of hours. That's always possible. So, um, but this action will, I guess, as I, we see it, will put that choice uh, for insurance in the in the in the uh, decision of the two and nine eight four five eleven hundred. Joe from Highland, what's up? Yes, uh, I have a question for John and Bernie. But first of all, uh, Big Rich uh, mentioned about the uh, Zest Fest. Uh, the only gripe I had was the beer tent. They had some disc jockey there. I'll tell you what, he was he was drowning the people out of that. And, and I don't, he had that volume turned up to max where you couldn't even talk in that place. So that's the only problem I had with, with the Zest Fest. You know, Joe, that, that's, I, I, that's why I really love the 4th of July Festival when the band's across the street and you could actually exactly. mingle and talk in the beer tent. Exactly. When 40, in fact, Bernie, you said you met a bunch of people there, and I think one of the esteemed uh, people you met was uh, Jim Delo there. That's right, he was there. <laughs> <laughs> We, we held it down yeah, for several well, hours. Our <laughs> Grace has great, but this way with that, oh, man, it's unreal. Anyway, getting back to the question, Bernie and and, uh, and uh, John, is Bill Baker, we all love Bill Baker, and he's probably one of the most respected citizens we have in this area here, made a statement there. He says if they had not killed that Bill down there in Indianapolis, they would have been, the problem of the maintenance of the river would have been taken care of. Uh, now, that delegation that went down there was orchestrated by who? And correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't that by McDermott and Van Til? The delegation to the, to, that went down to the General Assembly and promoted the bill uh, that you was... Killed the bill. That, well, I don't know about that. I know that that was uh, introduced by Dan Repay and his group at the Little Cabinet River Basin Commission yes. along with... Uh, yes. But I'm, I'm not aware of who, who killed that. Well, they, it wasn't in the governor's... They, that was our impression from the papers that there was a delegation sent down there and they argued against the bill and finally they said, okay, you, uh, you, it's up for grabs now. So, so what's the point, Joe? What's the been, point, Joe? What? What's your point with that? Well, I'm, I'm po point that we, Bill Baker made a profound statement. He said we, w we would have not had this problem of arguing about the maintenance of the river. It would have been taken care of if the delegation hadn't hadn't gone down there and helped kill the bill. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, Leave it thanks. there. You know, it brings up the word maintenance. 
and Little Calumet River. Now, these folks, 1,600 homes, quite frankly, I'm very surprised because I thought it was just mostly a Hammond thing. It was a ton of coverage of Hammond's 1,000 houses getting out of the floodplain, and you guys have 1,600. It's kind of a, I don't know, just kind of a slap right now. I, I should have known that. But the issue is you're saying, all right, you know, we're safer, but do you think that the issue of the maintenance can affect our level of safety? Absolutely. I mean, the system has to be maintained, and we've been, you know, we've been diligently trying to work with uh, Dan and his group to um, get funds in place for that purpose. We are, we're maintaining it right now. We take care of our pump stations. We mow the levees. Um, we're going to have an exercise the end of this month, early part of next month, uh, to uh, to uh, uh, install the closure that we'd have to put up on Kennedy Avenue in the event that the, the river comes up. So there's, it's a constant, it's a constant um, uh, exercise of, as I said, maintenance and practice and training to make sure that in the event of a, of a flood that we're prepared to, to stop the, the water from coming over the top of the, of the levee. Now, what about like acts of, wow, well, pretty much acts <coughs> of God or whatever for animals too? John, I was hearing that there was a big beaver dam that was discovered being built there now. Who would take care of that? Uh, well, at this point in time, it sounds like there's going to be a delegation uh, here over the next couple of days that's going to go out there and take care of that. Um, we uh, recently had an inspection of our levee systems along with Hammonds uh, a couple of weeks ago. And for the most part, we were acceptable. Uh, and uh, there was a few items, uh, particularly with respect to maintaining the vegetation and keeping the trees cut back and things of that nature. And But some of those areas are just have, are really difficult to maintain, difficult to access. A lot of the trees are growing on the, on the riverside of some flood walls that are difficult to get to. So we're working with uh, the Little Cabinet River Basin Commission to try to figure out ways that we can um, make that process easier. And, of course, uh, we'd like to see that funded by some other agency. We can do all we can do to, to maintain our levee system to make sure our bridge structures are free of obstructions. But if one of the other communities does not pull their weight, and there's evidence that some communities haven't done that in the past. Uh, there was culverts at Chase Street that were, were completely, almost completely blocked a few years ago. And if those things aren't taken care of, it's going to affect the other communities. We can do the best job exactly. that we can in our section, yep. but if the other communities don't uh, pull their share, it affects all the community. So that's another, I think, a reason that it, it needs to be managed by one central agency rather than individual communities. 209-845-1100 if you want to talk to John Bach and Bernie Zeman. Conservation Mike, how are you? Hello, how are you? Um, I know let you guys know Highland uh, does a fantastic job of maintaining the river and their levees. Um, and I'm just not saying that because I'm from Highland. Um, I've been all up and down everywhere. And, uh, and Highland's really... You know, taking care of uh, of what they need to, whether they it's their job or not. And uh, we have a similar situation right now as we had when Chase Street was all blocked up. Only it's a little further down this time, at uh, uh, just east of Broadway. And uh, and we're going to get together tomorrow morning and see if we can't take care of it. Uh, you know, as much as we possibly can. If we need to go out there another day, we'll have to go out there another day to do it. You know, to finish it up. All right, but, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, Mike. We're, we're trying to do what we can. Yep. Talk to you. I mean, this can't be a volunteer project. It just can't be. No. It's, it's, I mean, it's $250 million project, right? Yeah, Absolutely. And it can't be taken care of by, uh, well, anyways, let's move on.